My name is Colin Jaffe, and I'm going to be talking about ELM, uh, the programming language, not the tree. Um, ELM is not a JavaScript framework, um, as some people might think. Uh, it was released pretty recently in 2012, um, and uh, the creator still maintains it and updates it, which is uh, great to have just one guy basically behind the whole thing. So some of the key features, it uh, uses strict typing, which means it catches errors before you compile the code. Um, it also gives very helpful error messages, which is fantastic. And, um, and it uses a lot of functional programming, which um, I wish I had uh, enough time to talk to, but that's like a whole talk by itself. So um, if you've got data being passed around as undefined or a string, um, you know, and you want a number, uh, the language catches that. And it's got really great error messages like this one. So what it's telling you right away is that they, it's looking for a string, um, but you gave it a number. And it knows how to do that because every function has a signature where you tell the code and anyone using it um, exactly what type it needs. And uh, some of these uh, error messages can be really helpful. Um, even on an if-then, it can even look into your if-then and see that on one, you'll be returning a string, and on the other, you're returning an integer. Um, so, and uh, you can see it's even got a hint at the bottom where it's really explicitly telling you uh, why you need to do that. Um, it can even uh, help newbies uh, on board with the language. You know, JavaScript has truthiness. Elm does not. It's true or it's false. It needs to be a Boolean. So if it's looking, if your program is looking for a Boolean, um, it can't just be like there is some length. That's the equivalent of, you know, string.length. Um, it can even make sure you have all your edge cases taken care of. Uh, for example, in this uh, switch statement, uh, you don't have a switch, uh, a case for an empty array. So it's like, hey, you need that in there. What if somebody passes an empty array? Your computer's going to crash, or your website's going to crash. Hopefully not your whole computer. So that way, it can really uh, just double check your code before you deploy it. Um, and it's also really polite. Um, you know, it's even talking to you in the, in the first person here. Like, who's the I there? It's a little, little weird, but a little friendly, hopefully. And here it's actually catching a typo you made where you spelled a variable wrong, and it's like, that's not right. That's not how you spell it. Um, so the error messages, um, that's, that's one reason people really love Elm, is the typing allows you to have really complete um, and specific error messages. Um, so that's uh, some of Elm's features. Um, let's talk about uh, the syntax for a second, because um, I hate doing slides. So. Um, this, believe it or not, is a function. That is a function definition. That's not a variable. It's not um, saying that something that it's not putting information into a variable. It's declaring a function. The function's name is add. It takes in two parameters, and it returns number one plus number two. So the great things about this syntax, you don't need to mess with many parentheses or, or brackets in Elm. It also uh, has an implicit return. It returns the last thing in there, number one plus number two. Um, really makes your code uh, look very clean, look very simple, very easy to read and maintain. Um, we're going to do some live coding, because there's one more thing. The code isn't quite that simple for a function. I omitted something. Bam, live coding. So this is a function signature. What it does is it says that the first thing taken in is an integer, the first parameter. The second parameter taken in is also an integer, and it will return an integer. The last thing in the list of a function signature is always the return value. This is how Elm does its typing and error magic. 
is that you are telling it with each function exactly um, what data should be flowing in and out of your program. Let's do some more live coding. Bam. So this is, uh, again, just a, another example of a very simple one. Um, and here's a slightly more advanced function. Oh, no, sorry. Here's how you use it. So again, extremely simple. You know, no parentheses. It knows that the next two things to follow are the parameters because you told it up there that these are the number of parameters it takes. So it can do this. Um, and it can do that. And here's the slightly more complicated one. This one will just take in two. Uh, it'll take in one parameter and return one integer. And this one actually calls the other function within it. So you can see it's just really very simple syntax. Of course, you can build very complicated things with it. It's not always going to be this simple. You're not just doing basic math. But you can do some really, uh, really cool things, in it, and your code is just a lot more readable, a lot more maintainable. Um, so that's, um, that's sort of the basic syntax of it. Um, I want to talk about the overall Elm architecture. Back to slides. So the Elm architecture is it's a highly opinionated language. It's built in order to enforce a certain structure to your code. Um, and it's got three parts, the model, the view, and the update. And the model is uh, what shape your data has. Um, you know, what kind of, of data will your, your store have, basically? Um, whether you're storing Cheerios, information about what your inventory is on Cheerios, or how big your Agamari ball is, uh, whatever it is, you know, your, your app is going to need to store some information. Then the view displays that model's data. Um, basically, if you have an app, your user is interacting through the view through that part of the code that displays the view. Um, once you interact with the code, um, you go to the update part of the code. Um, this is the logic that dictates how your app works. Um, when, it, when a user interacts with it, what happens? Um, so of course, after you're, it's done updating, that uh, new data that your logic worked upon goes back to the model. And the cycle repeats. Um, nope, not there yet. So I wanted to jump into the, uh, let's see, there we go. So this is an app I made using Elm. And um, it's a basic counter app. And I use I very loosely there. I only started uh, coding in Elm on Tuesday. Uh, big uh, assist from Dan on this one. But um, you know, it's, it's really very simple to make uh, a, a quick counter app in Elm. And um, when you, uh, uh, let's, let's take a quick look at the code. Because this app is boring. So here you have the, oh, that's pretty visible, right? Great. Here you have the model that's, how the information is stored, um, you know, just your, your two scores. Here's the update that shows you how the uh, data changes when someone interacts with it. And here's the view, which uh, renders the HTML and allows for interactivity. Now, um, if this code looks familiar to you at all, because the syntax is very differently, but the, different, but the structure you know, if you're, if you're um, maybe very tired and you just sort of squint at this code, you can see a React Redux app here. And it's, in fact, so similar that I'm going to show you the same app in React Redux. That is the exact same program. It does the same thing. So you can see your action creators and your initial state here are very similar to this. Your update, 
that's just a, a case statement, a switch case that's exactly like Redux's. And your view is very similar. It's basically putting HTML into you know, what's normally programming code. So the reason that this uh, looks so familiar is that Redux is based on Elm. When, they, uh, when Dan Abramoff designed Redux, he took a lot of ideas from Elm. Um, and uh, you know, those ideas like uh, immutability and, um, and uh, pure functions and uh, single source of truth, all of that came from Elm. Uh, and it's basically Redux is his attempt to make uh, JavaScript more like Elm, which uh, is overall a good thing. Um, you know, they knew that uh, you know only certain, only some people are going to use Elm. It hasn't really caught on that well, uh, but JavaScript is all over the place. So let's make JavaScript work more like the good ideas in Elm. Now, when I um, explain Redux, and when I think about Redux, um, I like to think of it with a diner metaphor. And this helps to highlight uh, what Redux is like and some of the differences between uh, Redux and Elm. So in our diner metaphor, we have a kitchen, we have a menu, we have waiters, and we have cooks. Now the kitchen is your model or state. And you can see already that this helps you to think about how to use Redux because you don't go into the kitchen and uh, take food. There are rules here. There's a structure built to enforce a good use of uh, creating an app. And uh, that's the model in Elm and the state in JavaScript. And the menu is what kind of actions you can take. Um, you need to have a list of those so that you can, uh, so that you, the users of your program, whether it's you or other coders, can know what actions you can take within your program. It's a great way to structure it. It's a great way to order food as well. Um, and the waiters are actually only in JavaScript. They're the action creators. Um, you don't uh, tell the cook what you want directly in Redux, you build these action creators that return, that take the menu item that you want and return a meal ticket that, you can, that they can then take to the cook. Um, you, they're sort of the intermediaries between you and the reducer. And uh, Elms are behind the scenes. Um, that's just sort of built into the Elm architecture, which is really cool. Um, like, all uh, well, the metaphors broken out. There's, I don't know of a waiterless restaurant. But that's, that's important to think in metaphor because now we can see the differences. Um, and the cooks are your, your update in Elm and your reducers in Redux. Uh, they know how to cook your meals. You don't. Let them do it. Um, train them well. Um, so some of the ways that this, uh, the, the three things I talked about, the three things that Redux uh, took from Elm, uh, pure functions, immutability, and single source of truth are also very true in a diner. Um, everyone has one job in a pure function or in a diner, um, unless they're understaffed, I guess. Continuing, um, so you know, you, that, that really matches one to one on that. And the single source of truth, um, there's only one kitchen, there's only one place for you to be getting your food, there's only one uh, store in Redux or in Elm. Um, Unless uh, you're at like a food truck fair at, uh, in Brooklyn or, I don't know, something like that. All you can eat buffet. Um, and then the immutability, you don't change data, uh, you get new data back. Um, when a diner, uh, when, the, when you're done with your food, they wash the plate. They don't give you back a used plate. You need to be using um, an entirely new uh, piece of memory every time. Um, so I, I like to think in metaphors a lot, and I found that this metaphor really helped me to uh, understand 
Redux a lot better. And uh, now that I've taken a, a dive into Elm, it, it helps me to uh, see what are the differences between them, what are their similarities, um, and sort of visualize it. And uh, yeah, don't apply them too strictly, though, because uh, you know, a metaphor is, a, is an entryway into understanding the basic structure of something. But you need to be able to uh, look at the specifics of each system you're working with. Uh, so yeah, just uh, don't apply them too strictly. Don't um, tip your action creators. I don't know. This metaphor breaks down. So here's some further resources. Um, the Redux, uh, if you haven't checked out the Redux docs, they're really awesome. Um, Dan Abrams does a really good job of, of selling the Redux way. Um, the Elm docs are even more uh, verbose, and it's really like reading like a primer, like a, like a whole book, like an intro to Elm. Um, really, uh, basically, if you've never programmed before, you can look at the Elm docs. That's how good they are. And um, I have to plug my own uh, library that you can um, npm install and you can contribute to uh, called Diner, which is a re-implementation of Redux uh, using these metaphors. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>